Welcome viewers to our deep dive into the world of ultrasonography. In this initial phase of pregnancy, our focus is on the gestational sac, the earliest ultrasound evidence of a pregnancy. By approximately 4.5 to 5 weeks of gestational age, the sac becomes visible on transvaginal ultrasound as a round, anechoic structure. It's situated eccentrically within the echogenic environment of the decidua, the uterine lining that has thickened in response to pregnancy. A key feature of the gestational sac at this stage is its hyperchoic halo, a result of the decidual reactions surrounding the sac, providing a stark contrast to the anechoic fluid-filled sac center. This halo is not only a hallmark of early pregnancy, but also aids in distinguishing the sac from potential cysts or other uterine anomalies. The gestational sac's location is crucial, it should be nestled within the upper portion of the uterus, ensuring an optimal environment for the developing embryo. The mean sac diameter, MSD, a critical measurement at this stage, is calculated as the average of three orthogonal dimensions of the sac. While precise MSD values can vary, they are instrumental in assessing the gestational age and ensuring the pregnancy is progressing as expected. The growth rate of the gestational sac, approximately 1.1 millimeters per day, further aids in monitoring the early pregnancy's health and development. Subsequent to the appearance of the gestational sac, a notable ultrasound feature known as the double decidual sac sign can be observed. This sign comprises two concentric echogenic rings surrounding the central anechoic area of the gestational sac. The outer ring signifies the decidua parietalis, while the inner ring delineates another layer of the decidua encompassing the sac. Around five weeks and three days into gestation, we witness the vital development of the yolk sac within the gestational sac. The yolk sac serves as a critical nutritional and developmental structure for the embryo, providing essential nutrients and supporting embryonic blood cell formation. At this stage, the yolk sac is typically visualized as a small, round, anechoic structure within the gestational sac, distinctly separate from the embryo. Its appearance is a reassuring sign of a developing pregnancy. The diameter of the yolk sac at this early stage usually measures between 2 to 5 millimeters. A yolk sac significantly larger or smaller than the expected range for a given gestational age, or one that appears irregular rather than round, may suggest issues like chromosomal anomalies, embryonic developmental delays, or an increased risk of miscarriage. By the six-week mark, the embryo or fetal pole is visible next to the yolk sac, measuring one to two millimeters. The crown rump length is key for dating the pregnancy. If the embryo's ends are unclear, its maximum length is measured for early accuracy. Simultaneously, the detection of cardiac activity, a crucial viability indicator, is expected as the embryo reaches the size. A key feature of this examination is the utilization of M-mode ultrasound to detect cardiac activity, providing a real-time visualization of the embryonic heartbeat and enabling accurate heart rate measurement. The Society of Radiologists in Ultrasound, SRU, has set forth guidelines stipulating a CRL cutoff of 7 mm above which fetal cardiac activity should be definitively visible on ultrasound. The absence of cardiac activity in an embryo measuring greater than 7 mm in length is considered diagnostic of pregnancy failure. This threshold underscores the importance of early cardiac activity as a prognostic indicator in early pregnancy assessments. A fetal heart rate is expected to start at approximately 110 BPM by 6.2 weeks, indicating a healthy progressing pregnancy. This rate is anticipated to increase progressively reaching about 159 BPM by 7.6 to 8.0 weeks. Slightly lower fetal heart rates, such as 90 to 100 BPM, may occasionally be observed early in gestation. While these rates can be concerning and require close observation, they are not definitive indicators of an abnormal pregnancy, particularly if noted briefly. The mean sac diameter, MSD, at this stage is around 10 millimeters. Identifying a gestational sac larger than 25 millimeters in MSD without an observable embryo on transvaginal ultrasound is a key indicator of non-viable pregnancy. The CRL, which measures the distance from the top of the embryo's head, the crown, to the bottom of its torso, the rump, is the most accurate ultrasound measure for determining gestational age in the first trimester. 
As the embryo develops, the CRL is expected to increase, reaching approximately 10 millimeters by around 7 weeks of gestation. By 6.7 to 7 weeks, the amniotic membrane becomes discernible, encapsulating the embryo in a protective fluid-filled sac. This membrane's visibility marks an essential stage in the formation of the amniotic cavity, which plays a crucial role in the embryo's continued growth and protection. At 8 weeks and 5 days of gestational age, the ultrasonographic examination showcases a more delineated embryonic architecture. At this juncture, the embryo is distinctly discernible within the gestational sac, displaying notable morphological advancements such as the delineation of the cranial region, body contour, and initial limb bud formation. Between 8 and 8.5 weeks, fetal motion becomes appreciable on ultrasound. These early movements are a critical sign of nervous system development and overall embryo health. From 8 to 10 weeks, the rhombencephalon, or hindbrain, becomes visible. This brain structure's appearance is significant for assessing the central nervous system's early development. In early pregnancy assessments, we sometimes detect the absence of crucial developmental milestones, such as in an embryonic gestation or blighted ovum. This condition is characterized by the development of a gestational sac without an embryo, identified when a follow-up ultrasound displays a sac exceeding 25 mm in mean sac diameter MSD without a yolk sac or embryo, indicating early pregnancy loss. Further, we might observe an embryo with a crown rump length of 0.9 cm corresponding to approximately 7 weeks of gestation, yet missing the vital heartbeat, signaling fetal demise. To verify the absence of cardiac activity, color Doppler is utilized to detect the direction of blood flow which, in this scenario, confirms the absence of cardiac movement. Similarly, the absence of heartbeats in an 8-week gestation embryo underscores color Doppler's role in confirming such findings. These examples highlight the essential function of early ultrasonographic evaluations in spotting potential pregnancy complications, thereby offering crucial insights for clinical decisions and advising patients. That's it for now in our exploration of the early stages of pregnancy through the lens of ultrasonography. Stay connected for more insights and discoveries in the fascinating world of obstetric ultrasound.